Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the pixelab.net. I have a very quick tip for you today. And this is just a quick way to add a lot of detail to your scene without doing too much work. So I have this logo, which is uh, extruded and kind of ready to go. But let's say I'm going for kind of an industrial metal grungy scene that has a lot of detail, but I don't want to spend too much time modeling it. Well, let's go ahead and look at how to use the Atom Array uh, really quickly to add some detail to your scene. So let's say that we want to take this back plate and make it look like this logo is kind of resting on a uh, metal industrial background. Uh, let's go ahead and find this in our scene. Let's duplicate this and pull it out and we'll solo it for now. So we want this thing to turn into uh, some kind of pieces of scaffolding or metal. Before we do that, let's go ahead and set this up so that it's ready to go. Uh, let me take the white texture off so it's easier to see. So the way the atom array works is it uses the vertices and the way that this is subdivided to generate the geometry. So we're going to want the geometry to be spaced out kind of evenly. So let's go down to our uh, n-gons. We don't want n-gons. We're going to change this to quadrangles and we're going to check regular grid. And now we can play around with the width to kind of make this a little bit more uniform, something like that. Now we don't want all this geometry on the sides right here, so let's turn these to caps instead of fillet caps. So it's a little bit of a harsher edge and less geometry. And we can also go to the path itself and change that to uh, uniform. And that will give us even more flexibility on kind of changing the details of this. So we're ready for the atom array. Let's go ahead and click on our extruded plate and we'll hold down alter option. We'll click on the atom array. And right away it looks a little uh, funky. That's because the radius comes in quite big. So let's drop that down to 0.3 or so. So now you can see that we have some very cool geometry being formed and it looks sort of like a metal scaffolding or grid. Uh, right now it's pretty round. All these are round. You can leave it like that. Another thing you can do is drop the subdivisions way down and then it'll look a little bit more like sort of harder edge scaffolding. So that's basically it. Now all we have to do is turn our logo back on. And now we can take this uh, Atom Array and we'll kind of position it where we want it. The cool thing about this is it's all procedural. So now we can go back to our plate and we can increase the depth of it and it's going to work without having to go in and model anything else. So we'll just place this exactly where we want it and uh, we're getting a little bit of extra detail on our logo. The other thing we can do is go ahead and scale it up maybe so that it's a little bit more obvious. But the cool thing is it adds a lot of geometry but it matches uh, the back plate of our logo uh, perfectly because it's the same shape and everything and then it looks like we spent a lot of time modeling this. So now what we can do is throw in some uh, trusses or something like that. And these are from the industrial pack. And all of a sudden we have sort of very industrial looking metal grungy detailed logo and it uh, only took a minute or so to set up. So that's the beauty of the Atom Array. A lot of people have uh, kind of passed it by when the reality is anytime you have vertices uh, you can use the Atom Array and it's going to add some interesting detail. I'll go ahead and put a metal texture on there with some reflections and it's going to be very very cool. So quick tip for you guys. I hope that's helpful and um, just hope that you think about the Atom Array a little bit differently now. Uh, it's a very useful, useful tool. So thanks for checking out the pixellab.net, everybody. I appreciate it. And we'll talk again next time. Bye.